So, um, yeah, as far as me, just really quick, um, I went to the bone doctor and he said I have se moderate to severe arthritis in my hips. That's why it is so painful. Um, he said I can do pain management. I'll refer you to a friend. I hate when they do that. Or, you know, go see an arthritis specialist type of thing. Um, it's, you know, so it's really just getting worse and worse. And he, he, he said he wanted to give me a cortisone shot. I was a little reluctant because I know you get those. They last, don't last that long and they just in the long run make it worse. So, um, the pain was really bad. So I was like, he wanted to do both hips, but because of my diabetes, he said he should only do one at a time. So he said, let's just try out a shot. He gave me arthritis medicine and it's the same exact thing as the other medicine that the antique gave me for my jaws. Um, and you know, they only last a couple of hours, but the shot at first was so freaking painful. It's like a big, long needle and he stuck it deep in there and I was bleeding. I had a big lump there. I was sore. Um, the, they did relax all the, the pain on one part of my, uh, hip. So meanwhile, I'm walking with pain in one hip and only the pain subsided quite a bit on the other hip but it wasn't quite doing the the whole hip but after like a day or two i was like oh this is cool you know i'm not feeling a lot of pain there and it felt good i'm going up and down the stairs much better getting up and down much better and then i went to, uh, just like what happened last time i went to go clean up after my dogs bend down my leg slipped boom pain came surging back into that leg so it lasted me what five days to shot because i got it last friday uh, but I can't take any pain meds until after my surgery. So, um, my, I have to see the nerve doctor tomorrow and, uh, I, I've been getting like numbing, searing pain that got reached. It's like climax of pain this past month. And all of a sudden it's really not happening anymore, but I have barely feel anything in my fingertips. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. And then that's the last appointment. I'm going to have to reschedule my diabetes appointment, my uh, liver doctor's appointment. Uh, and it's probably not going to be till next year, but um, it looks like the surgery is going through. It was like, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. That's how I feel. I know that I was calling and calling and calling um, to discuss, um, you know, did, did, are you sure the radiologist is going to be there? Did my cardiologist uh, approve the surgery? I'm not getting called back. I was getting furious. I was ready to pull out. I'm like, if this is how it's going to be, I can't depend on these people. It's my, one of my biggest worries was getting stuck with that stint in me till next month. But, um, finally the hospital called me and I told them my situation and they said, well, just keep calling. Uh, nothing. Um, especially since I couldn't make it at my, my schedule of time, I had to come a, an hour later. Um, I got there an hour later and somebody else took care of me and she told me that other lady is not the one who does these things and that's why she wasn't calling me back. She gave me another number, um, you know, so that I could make sure everything's scheduled and ready for the stain removal when the time comes. Um, they took care of me and at first like, I'm sitting there waiting and waiting in the hospital. I'm, the hospital's calling me. When are you coming? When are you coming? We closed at five, five, blah, 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 because I got there at three. Um, and it was already 3.15. They started not calling me. I was ready to walk out. I was like, this is just not happening. I can't, I'm not going to put my life in the hands of people, of staff that I cannot depend on. And then boom, <laughs> as I was about to leave, they finally called me in and, and I'm asking questions like, it's not true that I heard of a woman going in, probably wasn't even in this country, but she went in for kidney pro situation and they cut off her hands and feet. Uh, you know, you're not going to do nothing crazy like that thing. Like, no. What about death? Oh, you know, that's like so rare, you know, it's like that I've known in the 26 years, nobody's died that we know of in that. But the thing that makes me nervous is that the practice is trusted, but the doctor that I have is new. So um, he's one of the new partners there. So um, anyway, once I got into the hospital again, it was like they just like the lady just grabs me and said, come on, let's get started. I didn't even get to do my paperwork. But while she's, oh, oh, because I, I had to really go to the bathroom and they needed my urine. So they grabbed me. And then meanwhile, registration's trying to get me. And so finally, after I did my urine, uh, they put me in registration. I told the lady, she told me to go right back. Oh, do you know where you're going? I was like, in a room? What kind of room? I said, it was a room with a bathroom. I'll, I'll just have her come get you. I said, are you sure? 
Can you just let her know I'm ready now? Because I knew it was closing. My son's waiting for me to pick him up from school. Um, yeah, yeah. And she, she, she touches the screen. Says, I just called her right now. I'm like, what? Sitting there waiting for 15 minutes. And this lady's anxious to get to me. And I'm anxious to get out. Cause, and my son calls me and says, Mom, I'm waiting. Anyway, uh, I finally, you know, 15 minutes later, I went up to the front desk. I said, what the heck? You know, this lady told me she wanted to see me right away. Oh, I'll let her know. The lady came running, running out. Where did you, we were waiting for you, waiting for me. She told me to wait for you. She, she said you was coming. Oh, she never told me. Meanwhile, you know, the radiologist is waiting to take x-rays and is they do all of these stuff. It's called a pre-op before you go for your surgery. They check your insurance. Um, so the lady who was registering, who was telling me that I, not to go back to that, come get me. She had a little bit of an attitude and. Um, you know, saying, oh, you know, you haven't been verified yet. And I was like, what does that mean? And then she got annoyed that I asked that. She was like, <laughs> like, let her finish, you know. <laughs> but I was like, I'm telling you, I'm like, I guess I was looking for an excuse not to go through with this. But I've been feeling pain in my kidneys. And so I know, I know I need to take care of this. And I said, well, what if I just don't do it? I told one of the, the staff. And they said, well, you know, you could lose function in that kidney. And I already am losing partial function here, so... I'm like, yeah, okay, let's just do this. So the lady, you know, the radiologist finally takes the x-rays and the lady's like doing everything, being efficient, explaining everything to me. And um, not exactly this. I know you're supposed to be in your stomach, but I'm wondering how do they intubate you and and all of this stuff. But she's like, well, you can ask the doctor that. But, um, you know, she was saying the only time she ever heard of someone dying, the 26 years she was there, was that someone didn't tell them about a medication he was taking and it reacted to the anesthesia and he died. And this was years ago. So, you know, I she pretty much put me at ease, you know, about the situation. Like, she was, like, really taking care of me, really being thorough, really doing everything that needed to be done. But one of the things that got me mad is, again, when I went to go to the clinic to get the paperwork, because I had to go there before I went to the hospital, she's like, do you have your cardiology clearance? I said, what are you talking about? I had it last week, and that lady that, I, that I've been calling all week uh says she was going to take care of that uh that she didn't want what i had she wanted to get something from him directly and she's like oh you know what okay then i'm gonna have to take care of that because i don't know why she told you that she's not the one who does these things someone else <sighs> so you know i i my doubts come with is when you have a staff that's not working right you know not working efficiently um but you know the, the hospital staff seem to be pretty efficient and you know, I just, all I can do is, is just pray to God that everything goes well. And I'm just trying to look, trying to have a good attitude going in and trying to look at this as, well, you know what, I'm going to have a good sleep <laughs> and I'm going to be drugged out the first day. So I'm just going to have a lot of rest. <laughs> and, you know, when I come home, it's just going to, I'm going to be supposedly better in for a week. And I'm just going to look at that as a time to relax. You know, I, I, you know, part of me feels like, you know, I'm not really having a vacation because I'm going to be in pain and, you know, back to daily grind in like a couple of weeks, you know, because I, you know, school starts again in January and I got things to take care of before that. So a part of me is having all of those feelings, but the other part of me is just, just trying, it's just trying to be at peace and positive energy, positive thoughts, faith in God and, you know just trying to take care of myself, you know, and so, so yeah, so just pray for me, guys, just pray for me, and, um, you know, like I said, I'll most likely, uh, you know, obviously, I'll, I'll be better in the next week, so I'll probably, you know, put a little video saying everything is fine, all is well, you know, you know, like that, and if, if I find out any more information about any makeup, you know, I'll just let you guys know. So, so yeah. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And I will see you uh, most likely again in January. Love you. Mwah.